Welcome back to another beautiful day here in the Rocky Mountains. Couldn't imagine a more beautiful place to talk about one of my favorite subjects, and that is suppressing the MDRX. Uh, this is my gun, some of you probably familiar with it. It's quickly become my favorite rifle. My poor SRS never even gets out much anymore. But today I want to talk specifically about suppressing your MDRX, what to do, what not to do, and uh, maybe some recommendations and some suggestions of my own. Most suppressors are a lifetime purchase, and so it's not something most people take lightly, and it's something that needs to be thought out beforehand. I remember when I got my first uh, SRS, I thought for sure that a 30 caliber suppressor would be all I'd ever need, and then I wanted something else like a 338 or something like that, and so you need something with a bigger uh, capability. Say you bought your MDRX in a 5.56 and you think, oh, well, I'll get a 5.56 can and I'm good to go. Well, then sometime down the road you think, ah, maybe I need a 308 or maybe I need something bigger than that. Who knows? So you find yourself then wishing, ah, I should have got something else. That being the case, my recommendation for someone who's getting uh, their first suppressor for their MDRX would be to get one with a as big a bore as you think you'll use. Uh, for example, this is my Silencer Co. Hybrid. This is one that I use quite a bit on my MDR. Uh, as you can see, it's got a big hole in the end of it. That's because I have a 450 Bushmaster conversion kit for this. It's an aftermarket, sorry. It's an aftermarket uh, conversion kit for this rifle, and so I need that big bore suppressor for this rifle when I run that uh, conversion kit in it. Right now, it has a, another aftermarket conversion kit in it. This is a six millimeter arc conversion kit that I built for it. And believe it or not, this is actually a 5.56 can. It's got just enough clearance to run on the six millimeter arc, but mostly I use the suppressor for uh, 5.56 shooting. Some people have the luxury of, use, of having multiple cans. Having more than one can, I can, I can have one like this that's dedicated for the smaller caliber, such as 5.56 and 6 millimeter. And then I could use a 30 caliber suppressor for the 308 and 65 Creedmoor, or I could use this big fat thing here to run the bigger ones. So as far as suppressor selection, make sure you keep that in mind. If you're absolutely 100% sure that you're never gonna shoot more than a 5.56 in the MDR, then maybe a 5.56 can is all you need. Having an oversized suppressor or a suppressor that's bigger than the caliber you're shooting is not a problem. Uh, it can sometimes be less efficient or maybe a little noisier, it just kind of depends. If you're going to have just one suppressor for multiple calibers, then definitely get the suppressor in the largest caliber. So if you have an MDRX that's a 308, and you plan on getting a 6.5 and a 5.56 or one or the other, then definitely get you a 30 caliber suppressor. Then you can run it on your 308, you can run it on your 6.5, you can even run it on your 5.56. And like I said, it might, it might not be the most efficient setup on the 5.56, but it'll certainly work and help protect your hearing. Let's talk about another subject that's kind of finicky when dealing with a suppressed MDRX. The MDRX has an adjustable gas system that you can adjust to match your scenario. The suppressor, conversion kit, and rifle combination all together can create some differences in the operation of the rifle. So what works on my gun might be a little bit different on your gun. What works on your gun might not work at all on my gun. So uh, what you need to do is adjust the gas for your rifle. Set your rifle up to run on the lowest gas setting that is reliable and the reason I suggest the lowest setting it's reliably functioning on is because you're going to cause a lot less wear and tear on your gun there's unnecessary uh, pressure and, and friction going on when you're running it at a higher gas setting. A suppressor can also greatly increase the accuracy of your rifle by adding weight as well as cleaning up the release of the bullet from the muzzle you can increase the accuracy of your MDRX as well with the suppressor. Another thing you're probably gonna notice is that when you throw a suppressor on your rifle, it's gonna get dirty. There's no way around it, except for maybe the float through style suppressors. At least that's what they say. This rifle almost never shoots without a suppressor on it. So you can imagine it gets fairly dirty inside. It's just part of, uh, part of shooting a suppressed rifle, I guess. So make sure you clean it, check and lube it as often as possible. I find that when running suppressed, it seems to blow my lubrication out of the rifle a little bit sooner than it would uh, without the suppressor on, so 
keep an eye on on your bolt carrier and rails and such make sure you lube everything another subject about suppressing your mdrx that can come into question is whether or not to use a direct thread suppressor or a muzzle brake mounted suppressor like this one so as you can see this suppressor mounts directly to a muzzle brake and it screws directly on and has a little ratchet on that holds it in place i like that feature for this particular suppressor but i'm i'm not that big of uh, uh, a proponent one way or the other you shoot what works for you uh, most of my suppressors are direct thread because i hardly ever take them off i'm not worried about whether or not they come on quick or not one thing i will say if you don't take it off very often make sure you take it off at least often enough to clean it and get some of the crud out of it so it doesn't get welded on there if you use a suppressor that mounts to a muzzle brake like this then you may run into a problem with having uh, not enough clearance to get it through the handguard. So you can see the handguard won't go off with the muzzle brake on which will require you to remove the muzzle brake in order to get the handguard off. So if we pull the muzzle brake off then you can pull your handguard off. This is especially important if you have a ratcheting or locking type muzzle brake that you have to squeeze or to press some kind of button to release. I would recommend using the shorter handguard in that case because with the overmold handguard that uh, release device could be stuck inside the handguard making it impossible to get it off. So keep that in mind, some muzzle brakes will fit through the handguard and some of them won't. Hopefully we answered all your questions about suppressing your MDRX. If we didn't, go ahead and leave us a comment down below and we'll answer the question down in the comments. The MDR is a blast to shoot suppressed. It's a great host. I would recommend anybody who can to go ahead and get a suppressor for your MDR. It just makes everything more pleasant. Thanks for coming along, guys. We appreciate you watching and we'll see you guys on the next MDRX video.